I'm Sarah Abadi with Euromonitor, and today I'm sitting down with Michelle Evans, the head of digital consumer research. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Sarah. Michelle typically looks at trends, you know, over the past year, over time. But today, Michelle, we're going to look at kind of commerce in the future. We're taking a, a different turn with this. So let's put on our, our fortune teller hats, maybe. <laughs> and, and tell me a little about commerce in the year 2040. You know, how did this project come about and, and what did you start looking at? Yeah, definitely. So Commerce 2040 is a new project from Euromonitor. And what we're doing is trying to understand different drivers and how they might change where consumers live, work, shop, and play. But more importantly, how commerce could unfold in those environments. Let's talk about some of those drivers. What are they? So it's going to be things like changing consumer values. Obviously, consumers of today are different than they were yesterday and will be different tomorrow. Another big one would be technology. We've seen that um, certainly usher or fast forward kind of that rate of change. And we think that that's only going to be a, a bigger driver in the coming years. So my my concerns about the new iOS are going to be like a joke in, in 20 years when <laughs> exactly. we're worried about exactly. what, like robots, mirrors, what kinds of stuff are we talking about? Yeah, all of the above. So oh definitely boy. we're thinking interactive mirrors, screens, uh, robots in the home, robots in the store, um, you know, even implanted earbuds so your voice platforms can talk to you while on the go. This is all really exciting. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about not just specifics on technology and what we'll see, but kind of what bigger, broader technology trends and terms do we need to be looking out for and what's going to be making all of this possible? Yeah, so I think some key technologies are going to be something like the Internet of Things, which is all about anything and everything being connected. Uh, you also have something like artificial intelligence, and that's all about um, just very broadly. It's the idea of machines being able to learn something, so it leads to automation. It leads to machines being able to detect images and then produce something on the back of that. Uh, and then you have things like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed realities. So and many just, realities. Yes, <laughs> and just simply speaking, it's all about the idea of you either being able to layer something over the physical world or to put the consumer in another world or some mixture thereof. So what are some ways we're, we're going to be doing that? Where will we be inserting ourselves or, or layered on top of the real world? Yeah. So, you know, when we think about like a shopping standpoint, there's definitely already some trials going on where maybe you could be sitting on your couch and you want to look at a vase and then see how that vase looks in your living room. Ooh. So that's a possibility. Uh, and then there's also, you know, taking virtual reality and putting the consumer maybe in a futuristic store or maybe you're shopping for a travel destination and you want to go stand on the beach or stand in the hotel lobby. Um, so as you're picking those kind of uh, commerce selections, you can be more informed. Well, I know I always want to be standing on a beach, <laughs> whether it's virtual or real. <laughs> yeah. um, talk to me a little about uh, experiences in, in the home. I know you mm -hmm. mentioned this cool decor technology, but how are consumers going to live and how will technology kind of impact how we're living. For sure. So when we think about uh, in the home, we think there's definitely going to be a lot more of that life on demand. So the, the streaming uh, certainly comes into play. Interactive screens. So maybe it's something we, we think it will come into probably the kitchen, the bedrooms where you can track usage, energy usage, something like that, water consumption. And we see it even tying into some of those personal platforms that we use today to track our health. Imagine being able to shop, in your, or you're not shopping, you're actually at your refrigerator and you're selecting something and then your fridge can nudge you and say, mm, that's over your calorie count for today. So when I go for that third scoop of ice cream, if we're yes. being honest, the freezer is going to yell at yes. me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're saying, do you really need another pint, Sarah? You've had three Keeping you honest. I like that. Um, so you talk about, you know, we think or, you know, we predict. Who is we and, and how did you come up with these predictions? Talk to me more about the project and the research itself. Yeah, so this is something we've been working on for the last several months. Um, obviously, we have 1,200 analysts on the ground at Euromonitor. Um, so we tried to tap into analysts based on their expertise and whatnot, ran 
actually different workshops internally uh, to brainstorm ideas. Uh, and then obviously we're leveraging our data um, and other analysis that we've built out. Uh, but clearly this is looking a lot further out than we normally do. Yeah, just a smidge. <laughs> um, is, it, is it challenging to kind of be predictive and look into the future when typically maybe you do five-year forecasting, but certainly not 25-year forecasting? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the challenge is looking so far out and then looking across the breadth of the space that we did. Uh, so thinking about these dynamics in the home versus the retail store versus transportation, and then boiling it down to a report that our client would actually want to read. Uh, that is something that doesn't turn into a massive 1,100-page novel, right? Uh, so that was, it was challenging and also very enjoyable at the same time. So, you know, a lot of these educated guesses, um, we hope we were completely accurate. Mm -hmm. Is there one trend or prediction that you think, I really hope I nailed this one because it's going to make my life so much better? Yeah, I think, you know, so we drew out, um, we worked with our designer here to draw out these worlds. And I think an image that really sticks out to me, and and I don't know if it's as much about easing my life as a, as much as it's about just making it more fun, is we uh, mapped out this experiential store. So imagine the idea that you're going to Patagonia this winter and, and you walk by and the store is able to remind you, hey, you got this trip coming up. Do you want to try on a winter coat? And do you want to try it on as if you're hiking the glaciers. So you can actually sense, is this going to keep me warm? Something like that. And then we also designed in that image um, this idea, like let's say you're playing the, the NBA star of today. And like in Space Jam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a holographic type of image where you could take them on um, and it's the championship game and you have five seconds to make the shot. Something like that. So I think, you know, as we move towards that kind of world of experiential retail, I think it's going to make shopping that much more enjoyable. Do you think cooking stores or supermarkets would be able to have virtual Bobby Flay cook me a meal on the spot <laughs> yes. that I could then eat? <laughs> yeah, take out. <laughs> exactly. Here's hoping, right? <laughs> well, Michelle, thanks so much for sitting down with us. I'm so excited to see what the future holds. And if you want to read more insights like these, be sure to download the full report on our blog. It's blog.euromonitor.com.